So in the last patch, we created a small device which flicks between two um, incoming streams of audio. And we're now going to use that to build a, a kind of noise making patch. We're going to bring it into this patch using a B patcher object. So select the patch that we created in the last video. Um, we can simply duplicate that to create two instances. And we're going to use some um, groove objects to send audio samples through the inlets of those B patches. So I'm going to create a series of groove objects um, and hook them up into the inlets of these B patches. In order to control a groove object, you need to be able to send it a, uh, a value to tell it where to start playing a file. You need to be able to send it a, a signal. So we're going to correct, connect a float box to the signal so that we can control it later. Um, and we're going to want to loop the sample that we load up into the groove object. So we can just replicate that setup four times. and change the names of each of the um, groove objects, which will just allow us to load different samples into the four of them if we wanted to. We're going to want to create some buffers. With names that correspond to those um, to those four groove objects. So we're going to want one called one, one called two, one called three, and one called four. And those buffers. If we put a replace message into the buffer, then it will mean that we can just quite easily load a um, sample file. Um, we can encapsulate that just to keep this a bit neater. Hide those away up here. So we're creating four looping um, streams of audio that are going into the four inlets uh, that we've created on these two B patches. Um, in order to actually kind of control the values going into the SIG objects, the signal objects, um, we can use a, a preset system. So if we create a, a preset object, and we're going to associate that preset object, that preset object, with a patter storage object. A patter storage object needs a name. Um, we'll call it Flickr. And then, in order to associate a preset object with a patter storage, you need to open the inspector for the preset object and find the patter storage value and just give it the same name. And then the kind of presets on this visual control will correspond to the presets that are stored in Pata storage. We can associate, um, we can tell Pata storage what to actually remember by using Pata objects. 
Um, these also need a name. And so we're going to use these to remember the values of the SIG objects. Um, in order to bind one of these pattern objects to this number box, we can use the middle inlet um, bind to. And so we'll create a pattern object for each of these um, number boxes and we'll give them all unique names. So now if I um, enter values into these boxes and save a preset by holding shift and clicking in one of the preset boxes, it should store that preset. And if I then add different values and save them into another preset slot, I should be able to easily now flick between the two. Um, the great thing about using pattern storage is that it can um, interpolate between the different presets that it has stored. So if we were to create a float object here, because um, we've now got two presets stored, if I move between one and two, if I create a floating point number that's somewhere between one and two, then it will interpolate between the two values that it's got stored in those two preset locations. Um, so here, as I kind of go between one and two, it's kind of smoothly shifting between the different values that I had stored there. Um, that will be useful for trying to do something musical with this. Um, but we'll kind of implement that slightly later. Okay, so the these two devices are going to be flicking these channels, of, flicking between these two channels of audio. Um, what do we want to then do to the audio? We could then pump it straight out, but it might be nice to apply a, some amount of effects to them. Um, perhaps just some simple EQ and some distortion could be useful. Um, I'm going to create a bicord object and rather than messing around, I'll just copy the setup that's in the help file for the bicord, the bicord object. I can paste that in here and then just delete everything that we don't need. Um, Let's place that up there. Um, to get a bit of distortion, we could use um, degrade to get a bit of bit crushing. Um, again, the help patcher has got a usable setup ready made, so we can paste that in. And again, just delete all the bits that we don't actually need right now. So we will pipe our signal into this bicord through a degrade object and let's put it through another bicord. Trying to fit all of this onto the screen. Um, maybe not. So, um, if we now send the audio um, from the outlets of these um, B patcher objects. Pick it up at the top of this signal chain. And 
and then send it out of um, an easy DAC object somewhere else in the patch. Before I send the audio out of this from this bicord object away from here, I'm going to put a limiter in the chain. I'm going to use an OMX peak limb object just in case the filters you know, filters can sometimes make some pretty horrible loud noise, so it can be nice to have a, a limiter somewhere in the chain to avoid deafening yourself. Um, so we can now pick up the audio coming away from this little effects chain um, and this should be a kind of usable usable device um, I would like to get all of this onto one screen to make it a bit more usable so I'm just going to move stuff around a little bit okay this is a good start um, so now what we need to do is we need to choose some sample files to load up into the groove objects and then we can see what this sounds like so to actually get a sample, I'm just going to grab something from a fairly random YouTube video. Um, here's a guy with a deep voice. So I grabbed that sample, um, recorded it in um, my DAW and exported it as a WAV file. Um, I used the program um, Voice meter potato, by the way, if um, if you're wondering how I recorded from YouTube into a DAW. Um, so we can now load that file. Into. Um, into these buffers, I'm just going to load the same file for now into all four buffers. Um, let's check that it's actually loaded. And so to make some noise, we would want to um, initiate those loops. Because um, we already created some presets, we can um, set some speeds for the playback. Um, let's see if anything is happening. There we go. So here we have um, one version of that file playing back at um, normal speed and one playing back at double speed. Um, we can set some values for the smoothing and we can set some values for the the flea speed of the flickering.
why we're not getting huge amounts of um, variation in pitch because the right hand inlets of these B patches are not connected to our signal chain. Things should sound slightly different now. <laughs> Okay, so we've definitely got some noise and it's working nicely. Um, we have not yet implemented the um, possibility of um, interpolating between um, values and so um, basically we want to be able to send in floating point numbers to the pattern storage in order to be able to smoothly transition between presets and in order to have some ability to automate that to an extent we might want to um, use a line object um, so for example we might want to move between preset 1 and preset 2 over a speed of a thousand milliseconds and then we might want to go back again let's see if that's it's not working because this line object needs to be initiated as a floating point um, line for it to move smoothly. Okay, this is working as it should. Um, in another video, I will try and use this to actually make something um, kind of coherent and musical to the extent that this kind of thing is um, musical. Um, great, thanks for watching. <laughs>